Hey, good evening, Galleon. Mayor Tom O'Leary here, Monday night. Uh, don't have any special announcements or um, um, anything to lead off in terms of a conversation starter, if you will. However, tomorrow night, if you've been following along and, and uh, watching the committee meetings of last week, uh, you probably realize that tomorrow night is a, a, really, a very full agenda. And uh, while there is one issue that's a third reading, it's been talked about a lot, literally for years, uh, most of what's going to be discussed is uh, first readings, and uh, some are uh, structural in the sense of the creation of a handful of funds. Some have more, I guess, substance. And what we'll try to do tonight is go through these. I'll warn you, or maybe warn myself, I'm, I've got 10% power. So for those people who wish I would talk faster or say less, uh, that's probably a good, <laughs> a good thing. First item uh, on the agenda tomorrow night will be the third reading of the Free Center Support Resolution. Um, not sure what all uh, needs to be said or can be said uh, over the last six weeks or so. I think uh, a few weeks ago there was an update in the price. Um, I think really if, if you're for the project, uh, you're not daunted by uh, an increase in the price. If you're against the project or uncertain about the project, you might see that increase in cost as, as, a, as another reason not to be supportive. I don't really see it as a aha moment. I think it's just life in the 21st century and I, I guess life in, the life in the 21st century is a lot better than any of the alternatives. So uh, I think that will be a close vote. Uh, I'm hopeful it'll, that uh, it'll get passage and some of the people who have perhaps been on the fence over the past uh, months or even years quite honestly, uh, maybe we can pick up one or two of those votes. Um, but anyways, that's um, that's the that's the the second issue on or the first issue excuse me, and uh, it's up for a third reading. So this is kind of uh, the the chance to demonstrate the city's support at this time uh, for using freeze funds to really jumpstart the fundraising effort. Um, the second uh, item on the agenda is um, uh, appropriating funds. The short version of the story is that this is a transaction going between the city and the Galleon Port Authority and what this uh, transfer of funds will do is support uh, the port's effort to get the apartments uh, out at Carter Crossing uh, jump started. I, I believe that uh, with a, with a um, suspension of the rules is passing tomorrow night that you it really increases the chances or the likelihood of getting foundations poured uh, and um, and really moving along the, the, the restart of that project. Uh, what we're hoping, um, it's not tied exactly to this ordinance, but what we're hoping is that the developer then, while they're working on the apartments, will also begin at least two of the homes uh, out on uh, New Winchester and the old Wrenchville school site. So that's uh, number two. Um, it's uh, it's a, it's, it's a supplement or amending the appropriations and, and that's what that is about. The third item is uh, really the only incentive uh, that the city is providing uh, to support the Bueller's project. And there's a lot that's been said. Um, not sure how much more is useful to say, but I think it, to one of the reminders is that uh, Bueller's is going, to, is going to be investing in the property and getting the building up and running uh, in the neighborhood of 800,000. So this um, income tax credit uh, that they've asked is for uh, the maximum amount the ordinance allows, but for half the term uh, the ordinance allows, allows. So it's a five-year request. Um, my expectation is that the, what this is, is new income tax that if they didn't open up, we're not gonna get anyways. So in the first few years to uh, support their their startup. My you know everything the city I believe can do responsibly to uh, increase the chances of of this being a successful operation. It's about uh, uh, right around sixteen thousand estimated the first full year of operation, uh, and then in the fifth year if they grow their payroll, if they grow their salaries, excuse me, their uh, uh, employee count. Uh, it can move up to the estimate of about 20,000. So um, 
then I'm, my expectation is in a situation where this has been a top uh, ask, something that the citizens have hoped for for a few years, this is a relatively uh, small uh, contribution from the city. Uh, I want to point out that although there'll be this, if you will, loss of 15 uh, to 20,000 a year in income tax, the, the payroll of Bueller's will be in the neighborhood of uh, seven, 800,000, and if things go well, grow up to a million dollars uh, in that fifth year. So the, you know, sometimes people in local government, I, I think in all politics all over, they look at what the government is going to get out of a particular development. And I, I, I've tried not to have the, the North Star, the leading um, energy behind doing economic development, getting a new grocery in town, uh, be the tax money that we can uh, generate. It's really about uh, trying to do the small part to build a better community. And I think once uh, Bueller's is up and, and running, um, there'll be little doubt that, that Galleon is a better community with them here. So um, <clears throat> that's the ne next item. I've got a little bit of a panic that I'm going to lose power here. So watch me act, fumble around a little bit. Next thing uh, on the agenda is not controversial, but real important. It's uh, signing on an intergovernmental agreement between the city and uh, an entity uh, uh, known as the Crawford County Transportation Improvement District. I could give you 10 minutes, but nobody wants to hear 10 minutes behind the background. But basically, this is a, uh, a county structure uh, that is optional by county governments. Uh, commissioners, and I've said this a couple times, I wasn't crazy about forming the TID. Won't go back in time as to why, but it turns out the Galleon is the first community that's uh, going to fund a project through the TID. This particular one is supported by $150,000, roughly speaking, of state money and $150,000 worth of city money plus around $50,000 worth of engineering. So while it's great to get the grant through the TID, what this does is uh, give the mechanism, the county TID will actually manage the project. Our funds will flow um, uh, uh, to the TID as as we get this accomplished. My guess is early 22. I, I just think it's it'll it'll be then. Although the plans are ready to roll, uh, my guess is the best time to sell the project, best time to construct it, is uh, in conjunction with the project on 598. And honestly, it's a little bit early to tell whether we're we'll do Brant Roads widening before the 598 widening or, you know, which will come first. So that's that project that's an intergovernmental inter agreement with uh, the TID. And I want to thank the people at the partnership. The, the TID uh, board, I think here, John Rostash, who is now, who continues to work for the city of Bucyrus, was a Crestline administrator, three commissioners, um, County Engineer and Gary Frankhouse, I believe, are the, the, the official voting members of the TID, so I want to thank all of them. Some of them, you can imagine, did more to get this to the finish line than others, but uh, the staff help over at the partnership was, was helpful in making the, the presentation. And again, this was a, wasn't face-to-face, -face, it was a Zoom meeting, and, and um, um, Pretty competitive. I'm glad that we got the funding. This allows us to actually get the, the project moving. Um, next item on the agenda, again, it's more housekeeping, but what it does is it's an agreement between ODNR, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, and the city uh, that, that works out the terms and conditions for the state capital bill money. Uh, we've talked about that a few times. We're anxiously waiting seems like the end of this week we've got a consultants and engineers who owe the, the Galleon City Hall some projects. So this is one we hope to have a set of biddable plans uh, yet this week. Um, take a look at those before we uh, advertise for those. But, the, but this project, this ordinance, will allow the uh, set up the agreement between the state and the city uh, this will be one of those things that will reimburse um, 
we'll, we'll spend the money on the selected contractor and the state will reimburse us. Um, I, and if I'm not mistaken, this uh, expenditure is already in the budget. So we'll, once we get the plans, we'll make a, a judgment as to whether to sell it this year, uh, let it out to bid this year or next year. If I had to guess tonight, I would say pro we'll probably do it this year, assuming the plans are, are good to go. Uh, so that's that project, um, a Park Square. You've been up there, it really has gotten uneven and there's what we worry about is a slip fall hazard. Uh, in, in conjunction with the project, but as part of the project, but not part of this contract, uh, we're going to um, uh, hope to be able to have a local artist produce a, a mural for up there. So uh, just a sort of tease uh, on that uh, appetite wetter. We're not, not quite sure what she'll is, uh, is uh, cooking up or fashioning up, but um, uh, we're, we're excited about that uh, as well as the rest of the work funded by the state capital budget. Let me move, I'll try to move along here a little bit. Uh, Next thing will be Polk Township Agreement. No big surprise, our uh, fire chief uh, successfully negotiated with Polk Township a new, I believe, six-year contract. I think, maybe it's even longer. It doesn't matter. The point of it is that in a county where relations between cities and townships for fire service, for cities and township for uh, paramedic service, not just EMT service, but paramedic service, um, we continue to be uh, real pleased to work with the uh, Polk Township uh, trustees and so the chief will have that uh, agreement for council to consider and, and move ahead. Uh, it's been quite a, an issue in, within the county and a lot of places around the state here in our surround, the township that surrounds Galleon, uh, it, we continue to have a real strong working relationship with folks so that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, next item, if you can imagine there's more coming. Um, we need permission. We, the administration, if you'll accept that. Actually, it's Matt who's done most of the work, needs um, uh, authorization to apply for uh, a, a set of three or four different uh, wastewater water infrastructure grants uh, through a large federally funded program, state administration of the program of the dollars, uh, Department of Development, uh, OEPA. And uh, th these are the, the, where you hear some conversation about Im funding improvements to the wastewater, excuse me, to the water treatment plant primarily and then secondarily some smaller uh, pieces of improvements, additions uh, over at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, so that's what uh, that, that uh, uh, ordinance is, will authorize us to go ahead and apply for those funds. Uh, there then are a series of four ordinances that relate to the creation of new funds. Um, the first of them, Fund 268, is setting up the fund that we need to be able to deposit and then in the future appropriate money from the uh, American Rescue Act. There's a, a right around 200, uh, pardon me. $555,000 that we're waiting to deposit, got to create the fund, and then we'll put it into that account. But break a little bit off, not an ordinance that's on the agenda, but it's something that we're working on, and that is how to um, make good on the rebate. Um, quick digression here. A year ago, we had a $150 uh, credit on utilities, and we had budgeted a lot of money for that out of the CARES Act, and the short of that, that episode was there wasn't much interest. For whatever set of reasons, maybe it's the fact that there's up to $300 and not $150. I guess maybe money talks, but there's been a, uh, if you will, almost overwhelming, oh, definitely overwhelming from the point of view of the funding that we thought it would be necessary to fund this uh, current utility rebate program. So one of the reasons there's a, a bit of a hurry to get Fund 268 created is to look at how we um, extend um, but yet cut off uh, that utility rebate program. So there was a discussion, 
I want to say it, it was at the beginning of the Finance Committee meeting about the idea of taking some of the rescue plan dollars and putting them in place so that all of the folks that had applied for and are eligible for this year's um, uh, refund, or it's really a, it's really a refund or credit, um, uh, that they'll be funding for that. So that is up and coming, but really the first step is to get 268 created. All right, what else? Uh, Mayor, I did that have question. a couple of yeah, questions. Yeah, why don't we do this before we get too, yeah, um, too far into it. Uh, specifically regarding the uh, utility yeah. credit. Uh, first one came from Tina. Uh, when will customers find out about the bill getting paid? Will we be billed for two months in October? <clears throat> no, I'll be credited for no. Nah, it's real complicated, Tina, and I don't and I'll and I'll and I'll screw it up if I make too many generalizations. The goal is to um, make clear first for the first time tonight, uh, and then through um, our website and through contact at uh, the billing office. We're gonna to try to keep, or we are gonna keep, the window, if you will, for applying open until September 30th, till the end of the month. Um, at that rate, we will go over what we had expected to spend by, by quite a bit. I don't wanna give an estimate, but several hundred thousand. So what we're gonna to try to do is um, uh, cut off at the end of the month those applications. So if you have one, request for assistance, we're gonna still accept those through the end of the month. And then what we'll do is see how much uh, money is still needed to honor those requests, and then that's the amount of money that we'll uh, have appropriated from this fund 268 that I was talking about. So it's, it is complicated and some folks are gonna uh, get upset about, I want an, in, an instant or a simple answer. Um, you have to be a little bit patient. Um, I think that if you check around, not many communities are doing this with their funds. The, many of them are spending the money on themselves and not assisting their local utility customers or local citizens. So, yeah, we'll probably get, people will be upset here and there about how this gets administered, but our goal is to take applications through the end of the month and do everything we can to um, uh, allow people uh, to uh, apply for and get that $300 credit. Tina's question, I think, gets into people who uh, got the credit or didn't get all of the credit, and I don't know her particulars. I don't even know Tina's last name, and uh, but but I I hope what I just got done saying explains what we're going to try to do. First step is to get the fund created. Second step is to size up between now and the end of the month how much more money we're going to need, and then get that money appropriated by council and get those budget uh, excuse me those individual account adjustments uh, made. Uh, in the month of October. So patience, it's a good thing. If, honestly, for the $300, it's probably worth it's, it's virtually uh, waiting in line. I mean, nobody's going to have to wait in line to get their $300 voucher, but please be patient. Uh, our, that's our goal, is to get everybody who applies between now and the end of the month uh, included in the list. Another question there? Uh, no, that was it on that. That was it. Topic. Okay, it, it's... Um, there's a lot, you know, if it seems like it's a lot thrown at the citizens, I, I assure you for local governments, uh, all this various funding that we're talking about, water and sewer infrastructure grant, uh, there's a whole, a whole nother wave of money coming from this rescue plan to do brownfield cleanup. So I, I, without, I think all, everyone in local government right now, uh, at least in Ohio I'll speak for, is really being asked to do more and it's a, it's a little back bending at times, but um, um, what, we're gonna, what we're doing is looking at, and this sounds like 21st century BS word, but we're looking for opportunities where there's money uh, coming through that federal state pipeline that match up with our priorities. And we're not, we're gonna f do our best to not bend in ways to do projects just because there's money out there if it doesn't really meet uh, our core service, our core needs in the city. So, any more questions? 
Uh, just a compliment yeah. from Tina. Yeah. Uh, okay. She said, "Thank you for giving the trees uptown a very much needed haircut." Yeah, I mean, it. it I t thank you. It's kind of funny. I have to be honest with you that it looks like a haircut on some of the the youth of today, where half the hair is cut, shaved, and the other half's not. So we're working on getting uh, the rest of that area. But I think the area around the stage is improved, and uh, and I thank you for mentioning that. Hey. Uh, uh, we've got some ordinances. Uh, I'm going to write this down because I'm, you know how you get. I want to mention somebody before we get off air. One of these guys who's working his ass off and probably getting gray hair as he's doing it right now. But we'll come back to that. I want to get through the ordinance here, uh, excuse me, through the, the meeting. Next two ordinances are the creation of sub funds within the health department. One's an STD special grant, one's an HIV thing. I don't want to do policy period on that, but that is is uh, important to have the the separate funds set up so those individual grants can be received by the health department and then those services provided instead of every in, instead of all of those grants four or five of them three or four of them uh, kind of thrown into a general fund stew down at the health department so it 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 is. More tedious setting it up, but I think it will allow for better tracking both at the state level and here locally for people who are, you know, have some concerns about funding at the health department. So that's um, what it's, it'll be letters I and J. So in the test that follows, you want to know that. Uh, the last new fund that's created is pretty exciting, and and um, you know, it the, uh, goes back to Chief Jackson. It's uh, it's the safer grant and the need to establish a fund so that as we spend money next year that we can ask for reimbursements from FEMA uh, into this SAFER grant. And the, the SAFER grant is, is amazingly competitive. Um, you kind of pinch yourself when you're awarded it, but we're certainly past the, you know, this isn't a dream stage. It'll allow the city of Gallion to hire uh, three new firefighters uh, their, their costs, salary benefits, uh, um, uh, equipment, all of that's uh, paid for by this grant for three years. And um, it really fits in well with the, some of the, the um, uh, succession planning, I don't know, planning for retirement, however you choose to look at it, that we're looking at in the fire department. We're, we have, uh, I think of the 17 folks more than half of them are eligible for retirement over this next three-year period. And, and staffing up, if you will, will help us continue to provide uh, services. And the police calls are down over the past year or so, about 25%. The fire, mostly EMS, paramedic calls, are up about 25%. So this will allow uh, the department to bring on three new firefighters uh, get them trained in the Galleon uh, Fire Department way of doing things. And then, you know, you never know of the people who are eligible for retirement, those that will say, yeah, I've had enough fun, and those that, you know, will, will continue to want to serve the city. So this gives us a lot of flexibility, and there's no way we could have hired three um, new firefighters in advance if uh, Chief Jackson hadn't put in a, a good application. I don't want to be... I'm not snotty about this, but I want to point out every other fire department in the county applied for and has of yet haven't been notified. So um, that continues to allow us to have what we think is the best fire and paramedic staff in the county. So heck in the whole damn state, but no, seriously in the county, did a, do a great job. That's what that ordinance is, is setting up the fund to, to allow for the reimbursement of the safer funds. And those budget people who are really into it will see the fire department's um, staffing is going to go up next year, but the revenue uh, will be offset. Those expenses will be set offset by this reimbursement revenue along with uh, the income taxes. So, all right. Somebody told me to come home early tonight. She didn't say anything about eggs and milk, but. So I don't want to get too windy. The next one, uh, 96 L on the agenda is. Without dismissing the ordinance, it's kind of a kitchen sink supplemental. And so tomorrow night, I'm sure someone from the auditor's office will kind of go through those. 
uh, items. They were discussed at finance and, and um, I don't know, enough people get this agenda. So there's some questions out there among people who are listening they can maybe ask about uh, L, but that's about all we got on L. Okay. The next item uh, is, uh, is uh, item uh, M, and it needs to be voted on the agenda, and it's a modification of the covenants. Uh, the covenants on the property, um, uh, the sleep-in property, and the modification, the end of the, could be a 10-minute, five-minute discussion, but the short of the discussion is, uh, in order to um, get this uh, sale to close, we've been asked as a city uh, to consider reducing uh, some of the um, service payment amounts. So there have been discussions, a bunch, a handful of phone calls, one meeting face-to-face -face with myself, the law director, and principals from the, the highest bidder on the auction. And um, um, I think generally understood on council, my hope is that this can move through council tomorrow night on a first reading. But what it does is cause the new owner to continue, as has always been, to pay for the water and the sewer extensions that were put in to service the new hotel. It, also, the storm water, main, basically the curb and gutter and catch basins on the portion of Keller Drive that is from Brant Road to the point you access um, uh, the sleep in. It's about 250 feet of around 700 feet. If you, if you recall before, Keller Drive went through, it was a cul-de-sac road. And in the original arrangement, the, the, the first owner had paid for the entire cost of that road. What we realized, uh, to finish that so it's not a 10 minute story, is that once Keller Drive became a through road, it was no longer a cul-de-sac, that's really much more of a public road than the private drive that it started out as. So the modification really affects uh, the new owner's obligation to continue to pay for the amount of the street that's uh, still in the TIF. So what, what you'll see is that uh, there's the money that is owed the city in the judgment that will come to us when the property sold. You'll see money that is coming to us from the new sale, property tax owed to us from the new sale, and then you'll see if you went to add it all up. Uh, my hope is this service agreement, which will uh, cover the entire cost of the, of the utilities and roadway that the sleep-in um, really uses, if you will. So that's what M is. Uh, you know, my hope is that it gets uh, approved on a first reading. My worry is that um, that the highest bidder is, in, in, and he can tell a story tomorrow night, but they're going to be putting in close to a half million dollars in improvements and renovations that they they see uh, in, in, in improvements and renovation, but also in a commitment to a marketing plan that they believe is uh, necessary to get the the um, uh, daily census, the, the, the daily bed count up. So um, that's M. Uh, there may be, it's way at the end of the agenda, I, I think I'll talk perhaps to the uh, council uh, president, maybe the members, and we'll try to give them some Buckeye hospitality and move, the, uh, move M up the list. So if, um, you know, if it appears out of order, it is, is in the agenda, don't be wildly surprised. That uh, item will be needed. To, be voted on the agenda and I'll be doing some, uh, I guess, um, talking with council and making sure that we have sufficient votes to move this through and, and get the sleep-in ownership in, uh, in, uh, sleep in, in new ownership. How's that? So, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, I do have one from Bobby mm -hmm. and it is at the east side of Pounder Avenue, uh, flooding was never fixed. One yard was fixed, the rest were not. Uh, now there are sinkholes again in yards. Will this be looked at again? Yeah, the, that's, if you know about this, it's, it, 
Yeah, it's not new to us. The, the, the history on that is this is where an alley was vacated uh, and the area that is really where the infrastructure is is in a vac vacated alley. It doesn't solve the problem. What we think will solve the problem, Bobby, is it may be, um, it'll be late in 22, but the reason I pause is it may be as late as 23. And over the past seven or eight years, I think even a lo little bit longer, because they were working on this as a, ma as a major project um, before I became mayor, there's been an effort uh, to systematically install storm sewers from west to east. And it, 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 you know, it started over Wood Street in the area that has been uh, under construction, uh, Murray. There's been three or four projects, kind of one a year, progressively moving to the east. The next big project is a project that will tackle that whole watershed area from First Avenue uh, to the low spot there in Pounder and East Park. And at that point is where the plan would be to capture that water and get an active uh, 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 storm catch basins and outlets that, are, that reflect actually having a storm sewer. Much of what you have out there now and that we've been replacing as we've been moving east out what I call the number streets, first, second, third, uh, <coughs> Hensley, fifth and sixth. As you move out, you, you, if you went out there, you would see there are real small French drains. There's really not catch basins. Um, one of the big decisions that will be made over by the next council and over the next couple of years is whether to provide uh, those streets, which I think are, are great residential streets, with some sort of curb and gutter system rather than just front yard field drains that go to a new pipe. Um, my goal is to shift some of our focus uh, from the state highways to the local streets. I'd really be disappointed if all we did was replace the storm sewer and we weren't able uh, to rebuild and put curbs and gutters uh, in those streets as we move again from east to west. Now back to Bobby's, you know, sitting out there, it, you're at the bottom of the hill and so what you want to keep an ear and eye on is whether or not we go for funding to build one large project which would go basically where we stopped in and around Murray, go from there all the way past third and pick up the area that you're talking. It's all, I mean, when you look at the way the water falls, um, doesn't, not the water falls, but the, the way the, the drainage works, that makes sense to build one big project. Um, and maybe with all this um, uh, federal money that's out, we'll be, able to, we'll be able to put together a project. But my goal is, without getting too much into it, I'm kind of into that project. We spent a lot of money on it. Really like to see it through to get finished. Um, you probably have a multi-million dollar uh, big project or something in the neighborhood, you know, kind of half of that if we cut it into two projects. I think uh, constructability might even argue that you probably want to build one big one. And But we're not quite there yet. Uh, we're waiting on getting plans. And that seems to be the life here in the public sector right now. The engineering community is really busy and everybody's waiting by the mailbox waiting to get plans. That's a project that we've had in the pipeline a while. And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, we're owed plans uh, by the end of the year with a goal of uh, being able to sell the project this year if we choose. So I could be off a little bit. Matt's acting like he's not sure about that. What other questions you got? Uh, that is all I have at this time. Is it that we ought to do? Eh, it's be too late. If he still survive, if he survives physically and emotionally the weekend, we should add him up here tonight. But there's a guy who I don't know real well, but uh, everybody owes a big uh, uh, thumbs up, a big handshake, a high five, fist bump, or whatever of thank you and support uh, for a gentleman named Travis Wolford. Um, Travis, in uh, just a real small committee, honestly, he's getting a, 
he's getting a little bit of a baptism of how difficult it is to recruit and maintain volunteers. I don't want to get into a scolding lecture, but we need to, as a community, work on that um, to support these kinds of organizations better because one or two people uh, can't do it all. So anyways, Travis is uh, Oktoberfest. Uh, it's going to be in October. What a novel idea. Starts Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, I think there is gospel music and stuff on, help me, Thursday night. Thursday night. So there's that audience. Um, and some local people have put together the talent for that. And then Travis and his group have put together uh, two nights of music, a country rock thing. And I read in somewhere it was Jeffrey Stutler. I don't know. Uh, there was an old, an old guy my age. I can't imagine he's still rocking. Who had that name? Well, maybe I'll find out. I think that's Friday night. And then a Pink Floyd tribute band. So if you're into Pink Floyd or tribute bands or, from what I understand, a really great light show, that's Saturday night. So um, I guess I'll get up there. I've got to do something Friday night with a different commitment, but I'll be up there over the weekend, and uh, everybody should stop up. And um, we got to put a get him a T-shirt that says, thank me, my name is Travis. But if you know him, make sure you thank him. And uh, he's somebody that I know would be... Um, happy to be introduced uh, if you want to introduce yourself to him and uh, give him a thank you for doing this um, let me think here I don't know a whole lot about it that's a smart move on part of the mayor the more you get into this the, the more you uh, you know are expected to be responsible Planet 14 what's their hook up with the music didn't they help put together the music yes they, they have a band scheduled and they're basically moving that show to the outside so it's more part of the festival there you go so anyways planet 14 that does a lot of live music they've got a piece of this and uh you know i think uh, everybody who can show up buy some carny food have some fun listen to some music and uh if i'm lucky i'll run into you up there and we can talk a little bit about how you wish i wouldn't ramble on so much on monday nights or whatever else is hot in your mind anyways travis wolford Thank you. He deserves it. You got anything else? Just a follow-up question from yeah. Bobby very quickly. Yeah, um, sure. The uh, broken storm lines will be replaced through all the yards as it does not run through the alley. Yeah, the the I haven't seen the design. We're going to have to get the water out of the low spot. The water want, wants to run down that alley that was vacated, unless my, my recollection is really off. And so we're going to have to catch that water that wants to run from south to north, it all gets into the creek just to the west of that. It goes over right by DK's. And um, so um, there'll be a lot of pipe, and you pointing that out, um, we'll put that in the forefront of my, of my mind to make sure that's being taken care of in the design of the project I'm talking about. So I hope that's, thanks for the follow-up. Okay, we don't have a T minus how many days? Oh, got another question. Uh, no, that was okay. I was gonna say we don't have a Bueller's T minus twenty seven days or whatever, but uh, uh, important step forward uh, to show the city's support appreciation. Uh, as I mentioned before, they're putting in a, a bunch of money. It's not my place to to be blabbing about how much, but there's, there's a lot of investment being put in. Uh, to the old store uh, to get it up to a Bueller's kind of operating standard and so this little bit of relief uh, is I think more than a you know it's more than a gesture it's 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 meaningful uh, tax incentive but but I think it's uh, given how how um, anxious uh, some days I felt desperate to get a, a new grocery in town uh, I think it's an appropriate kind of thing so so that'll be, uh, that'll be uh, I think, a key piece of legislation, and I'm hoping that council understands uh, the need to work with the new uh, successful bidder at the sleep in. We'll see kind of how that goes. Um, free center, you talk to people about it. Some people are, um, are so tired of it, they want to yawn and go to sleep. I think it, it, it reflects, uh, it, it's real typical of anything that is a major 
endeavor, something that some people think is too big for a community like Galleon, it's going to take a while. And it's a step-by-step -step process. My hope is tomorrow night we'll have enough votes to have that show of support, which I'm, I'm convinced is necessary to raise money from other private investors, the, the county perhaps, uh, and then certainly uh, state and federal sources. So those are the, probably the big three. Sum up for the first time for consideration, uh, one at least up for its uh, third and final reading. So, all right. Anyways, that is that it? That was it. Unless you're a Cowboy fan and, or an Eagles fan, in which case I feel sorry for you. Probably feel sorry for NFL fans generally. But anyways, uh, you're now released to watch the football game. You probably never tuned in to begin with. But anyways, we have fun doing this, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Uh, as is becoming the habit, the council meeting uh, should be... Um, live stream so you can follow in if you want and I'll stop pounding my hand on the table because I I've been asked by former school teachers and my spouse to stop that annoying behavior so I'll behave I'll try to listen to them for once and I thank everyone for listening and uh, tuning in tonight and for the couple questions we had uh, the fourth which is the middle of next week is the public meeting I believe for the uh, for the 598 project Monday the fourth Monday the 4th, so that is, uh, what did I say, Wednesday? My bad. It's next Monday, so we're going to do that from 5 to 7. Our plan now is to go ahead and live stream after that. So uh, th there isn't a need for certified notice, so we're going to use this mechanism, the live stream and our uh, website, and make as many uh, electronic contacts. Hopefully the media uh, will help us in announcing that media. It's real important for people... Uh, who certainly live along the corridor, uh, go to church along the corridor, uh, just use it to get to and from work or, or work out uh, there in the north end of town. Really uh, be worth your time to stop in and get your questions answered about which phases happen when and what exactly is going to be involved and how much access will be restricted. So all that being said, we'll let it go for tonight and uh, stay tuned. We'll see you next Monday. Good night.